All right, our goal for today is to factor using the distributive property. Yesterday we were introduced to this idea, and as a reminder, in order to factor using the distributive property, we need to remove the GCF. So we need to find out what all the factors have in common, or all the terms have in common, then we're going to remove that and figure out what would remain once we take out that GCF. So yesterday we started off with 12a squared plus 16a. We found that our GCF was 4a. So both of these terms have a 4 um, as a common factor, and then they also each have an a that we could remove. So to put in factored form, we take that GCF and we put it out front of our parentheses, and then we ask if we remove that GCF, what would be left? So what would I have to multiply 4a by to return to this 12a squared? Well, I would need to multiply 4a by a 3a, to get 12a squared. And then what would I need to multiply 4a by in order to get 16a? Well, I would need to multiply by a 4. So 4a times 4 would get me back to this 16a. And this again is what we call that factored form. So let's try a couple for today. So here's one we're going to start off with. We have 3x to the third plus 12x squared minus 6x. Again, the first thing we need to do is remove the GCF, or that greatest common factor. So I'm going to pause real quick and let you figure out what you think the GCF of these three terms would be. Alright, if you said the GCF was 3x, you would be correct. We can take a 3 out of all three of the terms, and we can take 1x out of all of them. So we have 3x as our GCF. So now what we need to do, since we have the GCF, is we need to figure out if we removed a 3x from each of these terms, what would remain? Okay, as a reminder, we put the 3x, because it's the GCF, out in front of our parentheses, and then whatever would remain goes into the parentheses. So again, I'm going to pause and let you see if you can decide what would remain if we removed a 3x from each term. Alright, and here is our answer. The factored form again would be 3x times x squared plus 4x minus 2. So we would need this entire thing, and that would be our factored form when we factor using the distributive property. So to check, we could go backwards and say, okay, 3x times x squared, that would get us the 3x to the third. Now 3x times 4x, that would give us this 12x squared, and 3x times a negative 2 would give us our negative 6x right here. So let's try a little bit more complicated one. This one has multiple variables in it, so we will need to be careful um, that we keep those exponents working with those same variables, but the process is going to stay the exact same. So again, I'm going to pause. First, you need to figure out what is the GCF that we are going to remove from these three terms. Alright, here is our GCF. We could remove a 6 from 18, 12, and 24. So we have our 6 here. Out of the x's, this one has x to the 4th, x to the 2nd, and x to the 2nd. So we can remove an x to the 2nd from all three of the terms. And then when we look at the y term, we can only remove a single y because this last term only has one y in it. So now we have our GCF of 6x squared times y. Now we need to figure out if we remove that from each term, what would remain? So I'll give you a little time to think about that. All right, and here is our answer. Again, we pull this GCF down, we put that in front of our parentheses, and then we ask, if we took that GCF out of what we begin with, what would be left? Well, if we took that GCF of 6x squared times y out, we would be left with 3x squared times y minus 2y squared plus 4. Okay, so again, we could double check. We could distribute this 6x squared y to each term and figure out if we got back to this original statement up at the beginning, which in this case, we would, so we have the correct factored form right here.
I always want to double check and make sure that there's nothing else in here that we can factor out that would ensure that we did get the GCF from the very beginning. Okay, so here we're going to do a little bit of practice. Here are three problems just with one variable, some a little bit easier ones to start us off. Um, so you need to write down what these, the answers to these three would be if we use the distributive property to factor these three polynomials. You can go ahead and pause the video here and when you resume, it'll show the answers. All right, so here are our answers. Uh, for the first three. For number one, the only thing we can factor out is this three. That's the only thing that both or that all three of these terms have in common. So we have to take out a three. When we take out the three, we're left with 3x squared plus 4x minus one. For number two, we can factor out a five from each term and we can also factor out an x squared. When we do that, we're left with x to the third plus 3x squared plus nine. And for number three, the only thing we can factor out is an x. We don't have to factor out a number because in this case there's nothing that can go into 8, 6, and a negative 3. The only thing that we can factor out is this x. And when we factor out the x we're left with 8x squared plus 6x minus 3. Okay, so those were three of some easier ones to work with. Let's try a couple more challenging ones here. So again these three here you need to factor these using the distributive property Go ahead and write down your answers for numbers 1 through 3. You can pause the video here, and then when you resume, the answers will appear. And here are our answers for numbers 1 through 3. These are a little bit more challenging. Um, for number 1, from both of these terms, we can factor out a 2, and we can factor out a single x. We can factor out 2x. That leaves us with x times y plus 2 would remain. For number two, we can factor out, this one we can factor out quite a bit actually, we can factor out 3x to the third times y squared. And when we do that in this first term, we need it so that when we multiply this and we distribute it here, we need to have 3x to the fifth y to the third. Well that means that we would need to multiply by an x squared times y. And in order to get this second term here, it is a negative term, so we need to multiply by a negative 4. And our third one here, we have uh, a 9y to the third power was the only thing that we could factor out. We could not factor out any x's because our second term does not have any x's in it. Okay, so when we factor this 9y to the third out, we are left with 2x to the eighth plus 1. All right, for tomorrow, you need to complete numbers 1 through 6 on the factoring 1 assignment in your packet. If you would like some additional notes or additional practice, uh, you can go to the Google Classroom website and I've attached a link that will give you some extra practice. It gives you kind of a step-by-step -step and breaks it down uh, from one step to the next step, giving you some guidance on, I think it's eight more problems. So if you want to look at that, you can take a look at that. Otherwise, you need to complete numbers one through six in your packet for tomorrow. Good luck.